it's all right in the house of love and light. House of love and light. Amy, open up the door to the place where we walk by faith and not by sight. Through the house of love and light. House of love and light. Love lives here. Welcome home. You're amazing. Hi. Good morning. Welcome to House of Love and Light. My name is Amy Steinberg. This is my home in Asheville, North Carolina. And I am stoked to be back with you on this Sunday. I have been away for two weeks and our little community in here is small but mighty. And I love that you're coming back even though I took a few weeks off. So, hi, how are you? How's everybody doing? Let me say hi to whoever he's here in the comments. I want to say hi to Myron. I just had a chit chat with him. Radiant, my sister, Lorraine, I love you. Christy, uh, Lynn, Jeannie, Lindsay, Jenny, and Jen. I'm so happy that you're here. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone who's joining us, who trickles in as we say good morning. Ah, it's a new month. It's we're coming upon the end of the year. It's holiday season. It's getting chilly. Let's just, you know, um, honor what's happening with the world right now. And it's happening with all of us, right? There's a there's a time of dormancy coming time of going within. And, you know, we do what we do here. And what we do here is an hour of yummy goodness. That's what we do. So I'm going to start with a with a reading from from the Unity Daily Word because it, it struck me this morning and I thought it was good. Um, we're going to have a new theme this month. Uh, you know, I pick a theme just to kind of keep me focused here with House of Love and Light. And the theme this month is going to be compassion because I want to learn how to be more compassionate. And the book of the month is going to be actually self-compassion because I think that when we learn how to treat ourselves in any certain way, we can learn to be more like that in the world. So this is for today and this is balance. So I hope that this strikes this, you hear this and you need this. The good morning, Charlie and Annie and Jennifer, Jennifer sending you so much love and healing to you and Jake. Okay. I honor life's shifting rhythms. Let's say that I honor life's shifting rhythms. Sometimes trying to balance my schedule, meet my obligations, and even find some time for the things I enjoy can leave me scrambling to figure out how to fit it all in. Today, I take my cue from nature and notice the rhythm of the seasons and the tides, the cycles of growth, and the order that underlies all things. I appreciate how seamlessly the natural world balances itself and restores itself to harmony. Um, this gift of harmony and balance lives in me. I honor myself when I flow with it instead of forcing my will upon it. Come on. I listen to my body's many signals. I rest when I'm tired. I eat when I'm hungry and socialize and seek my solitude when I need it. As I care for myself, I find balance. You see? So as we care for ourselves, we can care for others. Amen. I honor my life's shifting rhythms. That's beautiful. Sticking to the mission always here at House of Love and Light. And I like to say it every week because it reminds me what I'm doing here, what the purpose is, what we're doing. I want to nourish you with some spiritual food, you know, some some prayer, some songs, some, some tools to use. I want to uplift you. I want to make you feel good. I want to inspire you to be your highest and best you while acting as my highest and best self as well. I want to connect with like minds. We do that through the chat. We do that through, um, you know, connecting that way. We create a good time. I want you to have fun today. I want you to learn something. I want you to grow with me and I want to explore, see what you find. Usually I'll have questions that you can, you know, look within and kind of find what you need to learn today. What you need to hear today. So as we talk about compassion, I mean, it's really always comes back to what 
the four letter word, love. It's always about love. It's always about loving ourselves, loving others. And that's what we're doing here. And, and to me, you know, God good is love. That's what it is. The essence of the nature is that agape love that's living through us, that's living as us, that's breathing us. So let's sing this, this first verse of my song, uh, Power, and that'll get us in the vibe because we know that when we sing, we take those deep breaths in and we trigger our, everybody say it together, parasympathetic nervous system that's right and that calms us that connects us to our source to the force inside so let's get our groove on right here this morning there's a power in the seed reminding itself how to become a tree there's a power in a cell and it's capable of making a you or a me there's a power in a word vibrating at a frequency and there's a power inside that power inside that power you know what it is it's love 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 sing love with me love 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 good morning my brother patrick come on sing with me love 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 let's do that verse again you can learn it there's a power in a seed reminding itself how to become a tree there's a power in a cell and it's capable of making a you or a me there's a power in word love vibrating at a frequency and there's a power inside a power inside this power sing it with me it's love it's love 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 sing it with me love 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 think of something that you love think of it bring it into your mind something you like to do that you love to do a person a place an animal put it in the comments if you're feeling it think about what you love I love I love the morning time I love the mountains I love this home I love doing holla for you what do you love good morning Susan come on there's a power in a seed reminding itself how to become a tree there's a power in a cell and it's capable of making a you or a me there's a power in a word love vibrating at a frequency and there's a power within that power within that power good morning sarah dana it's love 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 what do you love what do you love feel that feeling let it fill your bones let it fill your veins that love that love that love that life force source that good that God that is you, that is you, it's love. Mm. I just want to really get into the love, y'all. That's what I want this week. I want to experience love. I want to feel love. I want to give love to you. And I want to remember that even in times of heartache, we have to remember that we are the source of love. When we feel love for another human, whether we lose somebody uh, due to them transitioning to the other side or them moving or breakups or whatever, we have to remember that the love we felt comes from within. So that love is never gone. That love is never lost, right? So let's sing some love, sweet love as we settle in. I'll do a little spiritual mind treatment here for you as we prepare for our time together to uplift. I love y'all. Let's sing this one. It goes like this. Love, sweet love, surrounds me now. Love, sweet love, comes through. Join me singing. Love, sweet love, surrounds me now. Love is the only truth. Love is the only truth. Love is the only truth. Love is the only truth love sweet love sing it with me love sweet love surrounds me now love sweet love comes through love sweet love surrounds me now love is the only truth love is the only truth big breath in relaxing into this holy moment I recognize the power of love the power of connecting to this love with my awareness 
I am aware that love is everywhere present. It is that source, that force, that energy, that life, that light that lights up the moon, that comes from the sun, that comes from within, that grows us, that flows us, that knows us, that is us. Yes, this love, this love that is you, this love that is me. I want to know right now that this love is healing. This love is prosperous. This love is joyful. This love is making good ass choices. Come on. This love loves itself. And that's why it does what it does through you. Anything that feels uncomfortable is just loving you into a new space of growth, into a new space of knowing who you truly are. You are the divine expressing and experiencing itself as this moment, as your life, as my life right now. I know compassion. I know love, self-love, self-compassion. I know love for you. I know love for the world. I say thank you, God, for knowing this love, for being this love. I say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, love. Thank you, love. Thank you, love. For all the lessons, for all the heartbreak, for all the growing. We say, and so it is, and we sing. Love, sweet love, surrounds me now, comes through. Love, sweet love, comes through. Love, sweet love, surrounds me now. I love you, Christy. Love is the only truth. I can hear you singing almost harmony with me. Love is the only truth. And today, ah, sorry, let me take a moment to just, yeah, I hope you received those words, my little prayer for you, for us. And we light the candles here at House of Love and Light because we honor all spiritual paths. And today lighting the candles is Lorraine Iverson, and she is the stepmom to Ross Cooper, who is producing my record. Yes. So it's all in the family today and we honor all paths here. So enjoy the candle lighting. I'm so happy you're with me. Good morning. I light a candle for the Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Taoism, that teach us about harmony, karma, and the way. I light a candle for Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Baha'i, teaching us about tradition, forgiveness, surrender, and order. I light a candle for ancient wisdom and new thought traditions, including indigenous teachings, shamanism, paganism, science of mind, and new age spirituality, teaching us to root and expand. I light a candle for the great mystery, the eternal question, the not knowing. Namaste. All right, y'all, you know what time it is. It's time to get grateful. It's time to get into the gratitude. It's time to put the gratitude in the comments. It's time for me to pull a card for that gratitude, right? Because we used to have Casey pull cards. Casey's taking a break, so I'm pulling cards. I'm pulling today from the Power Thought Louise Hay deck to find out what our message is for today. But let's think about what we're grateful for while I find this card. I am grateful for another day. Thank you, God, for another day. I am grateful. What am I grateful for? I'm grateful for Ross and his genius. I'm grateful for art and music being a, a transmutable source of creative energy. I wrote a new song yesterday that I love so much that I think it's going to be the title track for the new CD. We have My Sweet Family. We have Dana saying grateful. What are we grateful for? Put it in the comments. I am grateful for my animals. I am grateful for my mom. I'm grateful my mom is getting the help she needs for her back. 
I am grateful for changes, choices. I'm grateful for friends. I'm grateful for Lesia for my ministerial class. I'm so grateful for her. Shout out to Lesia, please in the comments, put the link to your book. Um, we've got uh, grateful for the mountains, for Joe, my love, for my children, grateful for people like you. I know, man, me and Patrick have such a cool journey. Patrick will be playing with me to our sold out show on December 23rd here at ISIS in Asheville. Patrick is an amazing drummer who lives in Hawaii now and he'll be visiting. I love you, Patrick, for popping on and checking this out today. Jennifer says, grateful for friendship and family, for the gifts of food and time and space as we cope with COVID. Oh my gosh, I know sending you so much love. Jen's got a big family. Grateful for my life, grateful for my health, which is improving every day. Come on, Pamela, preach it, speak it. And you know what, this is for you, Pamela, because I just pulled it and it said this right as I read your said. It says, I listen with love to my body's messages. I listen with love to my body's messages. And it's so interesting because this, you'll see throughout this hour, if you stick with us, that everything threads together. All these ideas that we come up with and Ash's message and Lorelai's message, it all comes together for something really cohesive that you can take away. And today I listen with love to my body's messages. It's our card of the day. My body is always working toward optimum health. I love that. My body wants to be whole and healthy. Say that my body wants to be whole and healthy. I cooperate and become healthy, whole and complete. Come on. I listen, listening. I'm grateful that I know to listen. And as we talk about compassion today, the that which is the theme of the month, the topic of the day is feelings. Feelings. And where can we feel our feelings? In our body. Our body tells us what sad feels like, what anger feels like, what grief feels like. And when we let our body speak to us and listen, we move through, we move through into that compassionate space so much quicker, amen? Can I hear a hallelujah? Absolutely. Let's hear from Ash Ruiz, our resident guru. I just told him to speak from the heart this week and let's hear what he has to say for us. And I'll be back with a message. Yes, the road's been long and the road has been a little weary and you may have lost only a king. Hey, yes. And now you're sitting right here in Hala, so you can hear me. Congratulate for stepping out into the rain. The rain. Cause sometimes you just don't know if the sun's gonna shine. But a vision fitting a fire time after time. Your dreams brought you here. Where will they take you tomorrow? But I fear you stay strong in faith and follow. Oh, nothing can hold you back from your truth. Now it's up to you and only you to choose. Now it's up to you and only you to choose. Yes, yes, you are exactly where you are. Which is another way of saying you are exactly where you need to be. Yes, yes, yes. I understand it can be really challenging to move from the paradigm of everything is happening to me to the paradigm of Everything is happening for me. I know that can be so challenging. And a good way to practice is to just really notice how present you are. Allow yourself to be as present as you already are. And feel into all the support that's here for you right now. Just as the moment is. I notice the whole universe is here supporting this. (laughs) 
So I wasn't planning on doing this song as we talk about compassion and feelings, but when Ash said what he said there, of course, I, I must sing this song. And it's perfect for compassion and feelings. And as I embark on releasing a new CD of music, I always come back to this song because this song got me a lot of fans and friends throughout the years. So I hope you enjoy me singing my song exactly as you think to yourself, I am exactly where I need to be. I am exactly where I need to be, I need to be exactly where I am, I am a blessing manifest and I can undress the moment naked time unwinds beneath my mind and from within I find the kind of beauty only I can find. I am exactly where I need to be, I need to be exactly where I am, surrendering so willingly to be the perfect me inside this now and truly how else could it be? Destiny, she blesses me. Destiny, she blesses me. With you. And when I try to fight or run, I only wind up back at square one. And when I think I know what's best for me, well, <laughs> fate, she takes me back to exactly where I need to be. I am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. Divinely timed and shining brightly, yes. I believe that there's a purpose just for me. Yes, I believe that we are light and we shine infinitely. I am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. I am not aimlessly existing. See, I I am in perfect harmony with universal energy and I am truly free when I accept my own divinity. Do you accept your own divinity? Look at me, look at me closely, tell me exactly what you see. If you are paying attention, you will now begin ascension of the mind. Why? Well, because if you look at me just right, you see a kiss. It took a kiss to make this breath exist, the intersection of my mother's and father's lips to touch, twist, perfect what came next, to produce me, yes, look at me, and you will see. The breeze, the breeze it took to shake the leaves, to make my mother's hair move, my father dare touch it, and say, please, may I have a kiss? Yes, the breeze made me exist. And if you want to get even deeper into this right now, when you look at me, you will see a big old cloud. That's right, the cloud it took to form the storm, to make the breeze, to shake the leaves, to inspire the lip lock. Is a raindrop will pop up out of these words. You heard me right. Look at me close enough, you see a dark, stormy night. And what is night? Well, night ain't night without its polar opposite of sunlight. So if you watch the way my hands sway, you see the light of day. Every day is a testament to the sediment of the Earth's core. It's ever spinning enormous force. So when you look at me just right, you see a spark of the source. But the most fascinating thing about this, and it's true, you look at me just right, you see you. It's only what you perceive, how you believe the space between you and me that creates reality. Dude! So when I sing, you can feel it. When I cry, you can heal it. When I speak words, you can be the words I speak by singing them with me. Peace, love, free. Peace, love, free. Sing with me. Peace, love, free. Peace, love, free. And when I try to fight or run, I only wind up back at Come on, square one. And when I think I know what's best for me, well, <laughs> Fate, she takes me back to exactly where I need to be. And when I am all alone and full of fear, I just remember the rising sun always appears. And every day, every day, miracles, miracles that I see. Will you take me back? You take me back, you take me back to exactly where I need to. I am exactly where I need to be, I need to be exactly where I am. Come on. Will you sing that with me? I am exactly where I need to be. I am exactly where I need to be, I need to be exactly where I am. Come on. 
am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. Good morning, Dr. Deb. I am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. Giving an hour of uplift nourishment at House of Love and Light. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that is a song that is 20 years old. 20 years ago, I wrote that song. Isn't that amazing? 20 years ago, and it's still relevant. It's still important to me today. It still matters to me. It still matters so much to me when I think about the topic of today, which is feelings, which is compassion. Because you know what? Um, I wrote that song during a breakup, and I wrote that song as compassion to myself to recognize that my feelings were valid and that it was okay because I knew I was growing through those feelings. And somebody today, I I put a post up on my page about, you know, has my music ever affected you and how? And several, several people have told me throughout the years that exactly help them through tough times. It's not about being on the mountaintop saying, I'm so perfect, whole and complete. It's about saying, I'm right where I need to be even in the difficult times. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so let's move on to my little, my little message here, which is starting with a quote from Pema Chodron, the wonderful Buddhist monk. Compassion isn't some kind of self-improvement project or ideal that we're trying to live up to. Having compassion starts and ends with having compassion for all those unwanted parts of ourselves, all those imperfections that we don't even want to look at. (laughs) Can we do that? Can we have compassion for all the parts, for all the feelings? Amen? I'm a feeler. I'm a feeler, okay? I feel my feelings. I feel all the feelings. I feel the good, the bad, the ugly, the dark, the light, the medium, the color, or the rainbow, all of it, the sadness, the happiness, the joy. I'm a feeler. Are you a feeler? If you are a feeler, give a thumbs up in the comments, <laughs> my water signs. So I'm also a thinker. I'm, I'm an overthinker sometimes, but I am a feeler, right? And I would say that thinking is not really the center of my life. I'm really more of a feeler. But you know, science of mind, religious science, new thought metaphysics, which is what we're doing here at House of Love and Light, in case you weren't clear on that. Um, It's a way of marrying sort of the thinking and the feeling with new thought stuff. But but before we get into that, I want to discuss the idea of feelings. I want to see who put a thumbs up in the comments. I have to move my my notes. We got a thumbs up from Jennifer, Dr. Debbie. Yes, Jenny. I'm a feeler. We got the feelers, Lorraine, Pamela. That's right. We got, we got the feelers in the house. Susan. That's right. My, there's my feelers, my feelers. So I love the Native American idea. I, I can't recall where I tried to Google it. I tried to find out, you know, which tribe this comes from or whatever, but it was, a, it was a quote. It, it might've been Oriah Mountain Dreamer. I'm not sure. Every tear carves out a deeper space for joy. In other words, when we love something, when it's gone, we're going to experience more experience grief because grief comes from loving something, right? We, the deeper we love, the deeper the grief is when it's gone, right? Does that make sense? And so our reflections, I mean, our feelings are reflections of the experiences of our lives. Our feelings are reflection of the experiences of our lives. And we get to decide how we want to use our feelings. Now, I want to share something really personal that happened to me this week. It was bizarre. It was bizarre. I got the feeling for the first time in my entire life that I can remember of no feelings. For the first time in my life, I basically disassociated for an entire day. I went completely numb. You know, and I've heard about this. I've heard about people who say this is usually from trauma or pain where you sort of literally step out of your feeling body and you don't feel a thing. And I had never felt that before. I had never felt no feelings. I'm like a walking feeling, right? And I think it was a gift for me. It was a gift for me, for my higher power to show me how some people who, when they're hurting it, you know, and we wonder like, how can they be so cold or how can we be so separate or how can I, it's, it's, it's a way people cope. It's a shutting down, you know, and you never know when, so, you know, a very good friend of mine, Stephanie always says, 
always assume good intent. You know, when somebody's not calling back or not talking to you back, or you're not connecting with somebody, we always, you know, we'll say, oh, they're, they're with somebody else or so, or they're, they're busy. They don't like me. Whatever the story is that we tell, we can reframe right now with saying, we don't know what people are going through. Sometimes people are disassociated. So I had that gift. It was a weird gift, but it was a gift of absolutely no feelings. <laughs> I went completely numb. I was completely separate from my emotions. But the next day, they came back <laughs> and they came back in the form of anger and sadness and even despair. Okay. I couldn't run from them. I could not run from them. They were happening and I was feeling them and I had to self soothe and embrace the feelings instead of running from them. Okay. So from Teek Nhat Han, I really like this, um, about these feelings and how to, how to work with these feelings. He says, it's like a mother when the baby is crying, she picks up the baby and she holds the baby tenderly in her arms. Your pain, your anxiety is your baby. You have to take care of it. You have to go back to yourself to recognize the suffering in you, embrace the suffering, and then you get relief, right? So when we have a feeling, it's sort of like, you know, what do I do with this? Well, we embrace it. We don't, we don't turn away from it. We don't check out, right? I've been feeling all these feelings and I have to ask myself, well, how does this fit in with religious science and with metaphysics and studying? I'm studying to be a religious science minister. And how can we apply like what we're talking about here as a practice to exist within a life that includes all of these feelings? And what does religious science really have to do with strong feelings that come on? Well, religious science to me is, and, and new thought philosophy is in inclusive. It's an incredibly inclusive spiritual path and philosophy. The love that is present, that is all things, the presence of the most high love, it loves all of you, okay? It includes all of yourself, it includes all of your emotions. And when I think about new thought is that it's, it's a teaching, it gives us an opportunity to transmute, transcend, and alchemize strong feelings that come on, okay? So in other words, when sadness comes on, as a new thought teacher, preacher, healer, thinker, practicer, I don't sit in my sadness. I look at my sadness. This is what Ernest Holmes tells us to do. Look at my sadness and what it has for me. I, I, I personally, I paint my sadness. I sing my sadness. I share my sadness and then it releases and moves on. But as a new thought person, I got to look at the sadness and why it's there. What belief is underneath the sadness that is fueling the negative emotion? Here's an example. This is just an example. It's random. It's not directed at anybody who's watching. I just want you to know this. I'm sad because a friendship has changed. That's just an example. I'm sad because a friendship has changed. Something in a relationship has shifted. We all have this in our lives, different times. So we know this is like a part of life, right? And it's normal to be sad when we see changes that might be uncomfortable or sudden, right? But the belief underneath is what I have to look at to transmute the feeling. Am I sad because I believe that I'm not a good friend? Am I sad because I have a belief that I'm not good enough? What if I choose to believe that I am good enough and that I am a good friend and that change, change that belief around and consciously say, you know what? Hey, yes, I see you. I see you sad. And I see that this friendship is, isn't quite once what it was, but it's, it's nobody's fault. It's just people grow and expand and change and it's okay. I am enough. Again, it comes back to that self-love, that self-compassion. It's so important to be compassionate with ourselves during big changes. It is so important from Lao Tzu because one believes in oneself. One doesn't try to convince others because one is content with oneself. One doesn't need others approval because one accepts oneself. The whole world accepts her, right? So when we work on this stuff, we work on the contentment with ourself, people become content with us. But I, I have to allow my sadness to live because it wants to be seen. It wants to be heard. And you are worthy of having all of the parts of you being seen and heard. And this is my lesson of the week. And this is what we're going to be talking about all month with this book called Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff. I have it somewhere around here, but here's, here's a quote from her from the book. Research shows that self-compassionate people tend to experience fewer negative emotions. Okay. So when we have self-compassion, when we feel the feeling, we acknowledge it, 
We are compa- We don't reject it. We don't shame ourselves for it. We don't necessarily ruminate. She doesn't, but she doesn't even shame you for ruminating. If you ruminate, you ruminate, right? But when you are compassionate towards yourself, you experience fewer negative emotions. This is a study. This is research. She did research on compassion. Okay. So we're going to be talking about that this month, including everything in our spiritual journey, welcoming the shadow, the pain, the fear, and transforming it, transmuting it, transcending it with the practicing of the presence, with the practice of compassionate presence, with knowing that there is a presence, a life, a light that is holding me, that is holding you, that is holding all of us. Ultimately, it is in a place of potentiality and understanding. So maybe take a moment right now just to think of something that is a negative emotion or something that is a negative feeling that has come up for you within the last week or two. Maybe sadness, maybe grief, maybe anger. And take a look at what belief is hiding underneath that feeling. Look at that belief and be just be consciously aware of it. Turn that belief around in some way, right? We can move through the negative emotions by recognizing, you know what? There's grace and ease here. We can come out in the end being better for it, having more compassion for ourselves and others. Let's sing, I am exactly where I need to be. That's right, I am exactly where I need to be. I am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. Let's do it one more time. I am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. You are experiencing exactly what you need to experience to grow you into the perfect, more expanded human being than you were yesterday. So we're going to close with a quote from Louise Hay, who is our guidance counselor (laughs) for good. Remember, you have been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. Namaste. Hope y'all got something from that. Hope y'all got something from that. I love y'all so much for the compliments and the love. And I want to give a shout out for conscious giving to House of Love and Light. This is not for my Kickstarter. This is not for, you know, my art. This is for House of Love and Light to continue. If you like what you're seeing, if you like what you're hearing, please give. Do not text love to 828-383-9889. I'm stopping the texting thing. I'm going to stop it. Not enough people do it. So just going to paypal.me slash house of love and light or Venmo at amy Steinberg 5 So grateful for every single dollar that comes in on Sundays, right? Or Wednesdays, because that is saying to me, this has worth. This has value. You are learning and growing and this stuff is good for you as it is for me. And I thank you so much for your generosity to help me continue this incredible uh, creation that we've put together over the past two years, two and a half years. Um, I have committed to doing this for three years, so we will continue this through April. However it's going to look, I'm not exactly sure. Upcoming, we are going to continue with this compassion. Next week, we'll be talking about forgiveness, forgiving. Thank you so much. I love you so much, Sarah. It's so great to see you here, and thank you so much. Sarah is one of those people that consciously gives every month. I don't know if you know that you do that, Sarah. You started it at the very beginning, and once a month, I get a, I get a regular payment from you. And it's so, I'm sorry, I'm shouting out that. But thank you so much, Sarah, for that. And I'm so glad you were here, Lesia. Yes, and check out Lesia's book. It's called Soul Excavation. It's right, Soul Excavation. Yes, and I started reading it this morning, and I am stoked to dive in, to dive into that book. Maybe that will be the book of the month for January. What a great way to start the year, right? To soul excavate. So next week, we're talking about forgiveness, then friends and family, of course, as we get into the holiday, and then fabulosity as we enter the new year. So get yourself a self-compassion book if you really want to work on loving yourself some more, some more this, you know, for this year. And also, I do want to give a shout out to my Kickstarter. This is a separate thing. This is for my new record. Okay, live long and prosper, y'all. I have a new record coming out. If you haven't heard me blasting it on Facebook over and over and over again, if you haven't given, if, in other words, if you haven't like prepaid for a new CD, which is how I pay Ross, which is how I make it happen, please go do that today. Kickstartamy.com. It is awesome. I've reached my goal, but I really want to exceed it because I wrote a new song yesterday that I want to add. I have 10 songs planned, but I'd love to do 20. 
12. So I have 28 more days to raise money. I'm going to keep bothering you about it. If you haven't, if you haven't done it, kickstartamy.com. It means the world to me. Music is everything to me. So here I've got a couple more things to offer you for this hour. I've got astrology with Lorelai. She's going to give you the forecast for the next week. And then, um, we'll have a little TikTok tidbit and then a tool of the week. So here is Lorelai. Hello, my brothers and sisters of the House of Love and Light. It's Lorelei. I am so excited to share with you as we come upon another full moon week. Right in the middle of the week on Wednesday, December 7th, the moon will be full, the sun in Sagittarius, opposite the moon in Gemini. So Sag is the big picture, Sag is the vision, and Gemini are all the little bits and bites of information. Gemini is the twins. It's, the ba- it's our spiritual self and our physical self. This is a really fascinating full moon because the full moon in Gemini, which is an initiating air sign Gemini, is right next to, exactly by degree, Mars, the planet of action, passion, desire, forward momentum, anger, and Mars is in retrograde, if you remember, appearing to go backwards until until January 12th. So what does that mean? Remember, retrograde planets simply mean a more internal energy, contemplative, reflective. It can be very challenging if you're one of those people that's used to getting things done and moving forward and conquering things in your life. It could feel really frustrating now because Mars in retrograde could feel a bit sluggish, could feel, you know, just it can be harder to take action because the action needs to come from an inner motivation. Like, why am I doing this? And Mars is in Gemini, the sign of information. So we can really wound with our words and we can also be very passionate about what we say and what we think and what we speak. But boy, it could be really easy to cut people off at the knees now. So you might want to ask yourself, if you find yourself running out of patience with someone in your life or with yourself, like, what am I angry at? There's nothing wrong with anger. It's an energy, right? Anger is passion that doesn't have another outlet. But again, we all have this opportunity to process out old energies now as Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion, is in the last two degrees of the zodiac, the last two degrees of Pisces, moving into Aries on December 20th. That's another story. But for now, between now and December 20th, we all have this opportunity to really let go of old stuff that no longer serves us, whether it's stuff, whether it's behaviors, whether it's ways of being, whether it's feelings, whatever it is. So until we connect, I wish you blue skies, green lights, and lucky, lucky, lucky stars. How much do we love how Lorelai interprets astrology for the new thought mind. I love her so much. She is a, she goes to unity. She's a new thought person. She always interprets astrology through the eyes of new thought. And I love that she's very into, she's very big into Course in Miracles too. So thank you, Lorelai. Lorelai has healed y'all. She healed from cancer. So we are sending you all of our love. We're so happy you're back. I was like grabbing all these other astrologers for a while and I'm so, and I do love Michelle Knight and other ones that we had as well, but you are our girl. So we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And now it's a time for letting go that full moon coming up. Just like she said, just, let's just all feel it, feel our feelings, be compassionate to ourselves. Okay. So I am a TikTok lover. A lot of you don't have TikTok, so I snag TikToks to share with you each week that I think are really powerful. So the first, there's gonna be two little TikToks. One of them is on compassion. I just really liked it. I don't even really know who the teacher is, but I just really liked it. And then the second one is going to be about that all about that we're living in a virtual <laughs> in a virtual world again because you know like I'm sort of like obsessed with that right now. So, that has really nothing to do with the theme. It's just a cool TikTok that I want to share. So, there's like 3 minutes of TikToks coming up and then I'll be back with a tool of the week. What a fun group today. Thank you so much for being here with me. So, compassion is not something you do for other people. That's a great side effect. Compassion is something you do for yourself. It changes the way you function and show up in the world. So there's a lot of science right now on compassion practices that derive from Zen Roshi Buddhism or even from the HeartMed Institute. For example, the HeartMed Institute found that if you just close your eyes 
and you see the face of someone you love, you see their eyes, you see their nose, you feel that love for them, you feel it in your heart area, <clears throat> it changes your heart resonance. And your heart resonance is a biomarker of health. In short, giving love to someone else instantly, physiologically changes the heartbeat that you're having and puts it in a better state that shows that your body is in a healthy mode. Heart resonance correlates with health. And I found this fascinating. That is how we start the sixth phase. Then we move to a more advanced compassion practice where we extend love across the world. Not We start with our family, our neighborhood, our city, our country, and then globally. Now, why is this important? Compassion is like a muscle. You can train it. And when you train it, you become more loving. If you think about all the great saints and sages and mystic, compassion and love was a key part of who they are. Whether it's Yogananda or Jesus, it was compassion and love. I strongly feel and believe that it's a simulation that we're basically living in. The night my son was born, while my wife was going through labor, I couldn't sleep. So I started drawing Vitruvian Man. And as I was drawing Vitruvian Man, I started noticing something about the way that the square was placed against the circle. And I noticed there's something there that was telling me there's something more to this. And I said, geez, it cannot be that if I measure the angle from the center of the circle to the corner of the square, what would it tell me? And I measured it and it was 51.85 degrees. That's the exact same slope angle as the Great Pyramid. So wait a minute, what are the odds? What I then decided to do is if I figured out that the circle had a radius of one unit, then of course its area would be pi. And so I thought, well, let me see if I could figure out what the value then would be correspondingly of the square based on that area a measurement of the circle being pi. And it turns out to be 2.718. That number looks really familiar. It's the Euler number. So he matched the circle in area to a square in the Euler number. It's the second most important mathematical constant, arguably even more than the golden ratio. It wasn't even discovered as a math constant until Isaac Newton 200 years later. Wow. What was da Vinci trying to tell us what was he really trying to tell us? And by the way, the masculine is represented by the square. The feminine is represented by the circle. Why is that? I think it has to do with rationality and irrationality. If we had a world that's only squares and straight lines, and everything, it'd be kind of boring. And yet we all can be confounded sometimes because we just don't understand the nature of emotion, just like we don't understand the nature exactly of irrationality. Or this reality. Or this reality. So we had to have sort of this offset of rational within something that's totally irrational, inexplicable. It doesn't really make sense. Just like it's hard to logically describe an emotion, but that's what makes the universe beautiful. It's what brings this curve, this inexplicability to our experience. It's it's sort of like the wild card <coughs> aspect of the universe. And sometimes for a man to understand a woman can be incredibly confounding, but that's the beauty of it. Instead of trying to completely understand it, we learn to accept it. We don't need to take it in through the logos, but rather take it in because each one of us, male or female, have both energies. So when I started realizing that da Vinci had encrypted knowledge of essentially gravitation, essentially of scalar waves and the differential between scalar waves and transverse waves all into one proportion between a square and a circle that had to be deliberately chosen to get that exact proportion that happened to also match the slope angle of the Great Pyramid, then you realize you're in a game. <laughs> then you realize you're in a game. After all that, <laughs> I just love this idea that we're in a simulation. It's If you Google that, you're going to get into a war into a crazy rabbit hole of oh my gosh am i even in reality it's that very that matrix you know anyway feelings feel it to heal it this week y'all feel it to heal it and i don't mean just like feel your feelings i mean like feel it in your body okay so like when the sad come up say like where does that sad live this is very like um presence process if you if you've read that book or done that class with reverend kevin Busey, like presence process stuff like this week i invite you back to that work which is like if the grief comes up where's the grief sitting is it in your throat give it give it attention give it compassion and don't and to transcend it don't pretend don't pretend it's not there don't ignore it don't numb out to it amen 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 feel it to heal it i know we've I know we've heard that a million times, but I don't mean like just emote. I mean, physically in your body, 
again, your body is coming back to this this week. Physically in your body, notice where the joy is. Notice where whatever feeling that comes up, have compassion for it. Be gentle with it. Again, this, you know, House of Love and Light has been a process of me learning how to be gentle with myself, gentle with you, gentle with the world. And it's it's a process, y'all. My good friends who watch this know that I am not this slap happy person all the time. I am not this spiritually evolved being all the time. I would like to be. That is what my ministerial teacher, James Mellon, hopes for all of his students, that they are the same exact person when they're on the pulpit and when they're off in the world. And so I'm working on that. I'm working on practicing these principles in all of my affairs, as they say in the 12 step programs. Um, I'm working with my therapist as well as bringing Hala into my life as opposed to bringing my life into Hala, right? It's almost like there's these two aspects of me. And, you know, this is just all of us. We have a highest self and we want to integrate our highest self into everything that we do. I love you all so much. I really appreciate you being here with me to practice. That's what we do here at House of Love and Light is we practice being love and being light. And this month we'll be compassionate to ourselves. Again, thank you for all your love offerings this week. Thank you for kickstarting me this week. We reached the goal, but let's go beyond it. Let's go beyond it. Come on, come on, come on. I love you, Jenny. And I want to say goodbye to everybody. It's, you know, it's not a massively huge crowd here today, but I felt you. I could feel your love. I could feel your presence. And I really, really appreciate it more than I can say. I hope you have an awesome week. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday night for music and meditation at 7 p.m. Eastern time where we chill, check in, and chant. And it's a blast if you've never been. So come on in to the House of Love and Light Wednesday night at 7 p.m. I love you. I love you, Lynn. I love you, Jeannie. I love you, Debbie. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye-bye. Love and light.